Hi everyone, my name is George, your friendly data guy, and I'm here today to showcase how you could do an assessment of your environment before you start implementing data governance. This is really one of the first few things that you need to do to do that environmental scan and understand where you stand, what the challenges and priorities are, as well as, you know, all of this information will really help you put your business case together for data governance. So let's see in this lesson, how can you do just that? How can you do an assessment for data governance? Yes, there are a few other things that we need to do before this assessment, which I cover it all in my course on practical data governance. But now again, let's understand who our stakeholders are, what their main pain points are, and maybe even what our technical and information and data landscape looks like. So in this lesson, I'm going to cover it through a high level ad hoc assessment. Okay, we're kind of just trying to get an understanding of what's going on in our organization and the organization that we're trying to implement data governance. Now, another way, another way to do this is to adopt the data governance maturity model, which I have a whole course about and other free videos as well. So uh, this is covered in detail in other areas. Now, what do we want to do? with the ad hoc assessment. Well, we want to first understand the pain points. And I like to note these pain points from a data perspective, but at the same time, to really understand what's the impact to the business. That's what we care about. So looking at this from a data perspective, I like to divide it in these three streams that you're seeing right here. Data acquisition, which also includes data creation, data maintenance, and data dissemination. Why? Because at a high level, this is the process that data goes through. You can also include the, um, the data destruction here, or archival, you know, as another stream, but those pain points, are, they tend not to be as dire as the other three streams. That being said, if your main driver for data governance program is a regulatory compliance, I would also add this data destruction archival to this list of pain points because those regulations kind of tend to go over the data retention policies, procedures, and the right to be forgotten in the case of GDPR and so on. But regardless, how do you uncover these pain points in these categories? Well, I would start in an informal fashion through meetings and interviews and, you know, these could be done in person or by email or phone call. I haven't done this through text messaging or WhatsApp yet, but who knows? Maybe that's going to be on the table in the future. Now, some also like to do some job shadowing for a few days with certain, you know, individuals. And even though that's insightful, it can take quite a bit of time. It can also be a little bit of, uh, you know, nerve wracking for the person that you're shadowing. So instead, I prefer organizing some drop in sessions and workshops where, you know, people just join in and uh, come and really tell you their, their pain points, their struggles and so forth and so on. So uh, let me give an example of a workshop that you can organize. I invite people from different parts of the business that interact with the data in one form or another. And those invited usually include a mix of business functions from support roles to management roles. So you kind of have the whole gamut there. I also give them a set of post-it notes. Yes, post-it notes, very helpful, very tactile. And really using post-it notes, I ask them, to, I, I'm asking them to outline at a high level, the challenges and issues that they are facing when it comes to these three streams that I mentioned, the data acquisition, data maintenance, and data dissemination. Now there's no limit on how much they can put up there, you know, on post-it notes, I guess the only limit is the time, 
but also recommend letting people know of the exercise well before the workshop so that they have time to prepare. In fact, in certain workshops, I'm asking them to come with the post-its already kind of written down. And then I guess by being inspired to see what other people have written, they could keep on adding more during the workshop. Now, um, I usually run a few of these workshops with different sets of people, but in each one, I also tend to have someone from IT, from the technical side. Then as a group, we just categorize these entries and kind of figure out which ones are duplicates and there will surely be some overlap, right? After the workshops are done, you will end up with something like this. Okay, you, you have the three streams and each one of the three streams, you would have different issues listed such as, uh, you know, like how we have it now for data acquisition, the fact that you people are complaining of the multiple data sources for the same thing, uh, the manual process involved in dealing with the data, the fact that there's no standards, there's redundancy of efforts, there's multiple ways of storing the same information in different areas, there's no data validation, missed opportunities and so on. For the data uh, maintenance piece, I see people complaining that there's highly manual, there's no data classification in place, so you don't quite know what's high risk sensitive information. Maybe you can when you spot it, but you can't usually quickly point out to knowing, yeah, that table does contain sensitive information. We shouldn't share that in that way with those employees. Uh, you know, there's data integration issues, uh, lack of data cleansing, it's not consistent, it's not timely enough, it takes a while for things to happen. There's a lack of data accessibility, it always takes a long time to get access to something. For data dissemination, there's no golden record, there's no master record that can be easily identified and put together. Usually it's bottlenecked by IT, you know, I love IT but they usually tend to be the bottleneck because they lack the resources. It's not easy to kind of repeat some of the results, reports, data that's being pulled out. Um, you might also get inconsistent information. Data cleansing sometimes happens after data polls are being done, after the data are being extracted out of a system and prepared for other processes. The data gets cleansed in that transition phase, but it never gets back into its source system. You know, there's a lack of definition. So two people are looking at the same thing, but interpreting it differently. And these are just some examples that are coming out of these workshop. Okay. What do you do? Well, here's what I like to do here. You can use the same workshop to prioritize these issues. So let's say that we have these three issues being noted, lack of standards, duplicate records and misuse of business terms. Here's what I recommend. Give everyone 10 stickers, you know, kind of those, uh, those green bullets, green stickers that you see there. And they could basically use that to vote on the issues that they think should be addressed first. And they can choose their stickers, you know, to vote for the same thing multiple times, or just allow them to only vote for one. It's your call. I liked the first option. Just if they think, you know, lack of data standards is so important, have them put their entire 10 stickers on that post note, if that's, you know, how strongly they feel about it. And afterwards, they, they keep voting on it and you can just tally it up. And from the votes, you can kind of see the working group's perspective, which should be tackled first. I think this is a fun exercise. Again, it's highly tactile and people feel engaged. That being said, the groups are not the ultimate decision makers though, but it's good to get them involved even though you might come back to them and say, okay, uh, the misuse of business terms, it's definitely high on the list here, but we actually should tackle the lack of standards first because that will help us identify the business terms needed and define them and so forth and so on. More on that in another lesson. Okay. 
So that's how, uh, this is again, a fun exercise, fun workshop idea, fun and insightful, I would say, at least from my perspective, on how you can identify uh, the issues from a data perspective for those three streams that we went over. Next on the list is uh, some sort of an ad hoc assessment of really people. We should, we should really try and gain an understanding of who the sponsors are, those that are most affected, and the champions. How will you identify all of these? Well, through the same methods that I've mentioned before in identifying those um, pain points. Now, through you know those meetings and workshops for the most part, right? Let's start with the sponsor. When you're doing this assessment, you might already have a sponsor that's tasked you with doing this assessment. But there are many instances when that's not the case and the sponsor needs to be determined. Usually, usually you have one sponsor for data governance. But there are programs, data governance programs that have multiple sponsors and that's even better. You know, if you have three major lines of businesses, it's great to have a sponsor from each line. It's kind of like having your program endorsed three times. Okay, so you can have several. You don't need to stop at one. More on that in another lesson. The most affected. The most affected individuals are those that are most affected by the status of your data, by the lack of a data governance program. For this, it's it's great to look at who is creating that data, who is managing the data, who's ensuring its data quality, security, and so on. But also, who's consuming that information based on data? Who's analyzing it? Who has business processes that are dependent on data? And ultimately, who's really complaining the most? These are people that you want to have in the workshops that I mentioned before. So you want to keep engaging with them with your data governance implementation. Similarly, your organization would have some champions in its ranks. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're one of those champions. Now, these champions, they, they tend to be the unsung heroes that go above and beyond. And really, they care about the quality of the data. And yes, you know, they're not always IT. It's people on the business side that take it upon themselves to manually correct the data that they work with. There are people that have a lot of business knowledge and understanding why things are the way they are and how they should be. They are people that usually create workarounds and, you know, fixing the current situation to meet their needs. These tend to be data stewards, but without having the title of a data steward, nor the responsibility in their job description. These champions are also people that are already voicing the importance of managing and governing data, maybe without you know, that clear explanation, but that's what they are wishing for. These are your biggest supporters. These are people that don't need any convincing as to why data governance is needed. And moreover, they will be there to help you promote it. So make a list of these individuals. They're highly important. Now, the last piece of your ad hoc assessment is to understand the technical and information environment. It's not that important at this stage of your pre data governance implementation work, but it's definitely a nice to have as you will uncover all these along the way um, while you're implementing data governance. So what are these things? Well, the data sources and systems that work with your data, any data management and governance tools, and you know, I don't know, any other artifacts that we should care about. And let me give you, give you some examples. Data sources, the data sources and the systems, all right? <clears throat> now it's good to be aware of what systems and databases are currently in your environment. And you know, at a high level, high level right now. And same with the data flow, again, a high level data flow. Uh, there are different asset management tools that can track all of this, sure. But if there isn't one, you can always track it in Excel. And here's a template that I use for that. There you go. 
and I'll post a link to uh, to it um, to uh, that if you like to download it. As for the data flow, here's again an example of a high-level diagram. If you just create this, something like this, you have a great win. It's it will just give you an understanding of the different data sources and systems in your ecosystem and how they interact with one another, again, at a high level. If you don't explore this at this point, this is definitely an artifact that it can put together at a later date as it will help you identify some of those technical data stewards, system and business owners that should be engaged for various projects and so on. All right, let's, let's move on here. The next on the list are those data management, data governance tools, such as the business glossary, data dictionaries, data catalog. Do they exist? For the most part, probably not. But is there anything on data lineage? Is there anything on data profiling, data classification, reporting tools, data visualization tools, data security, and so on? Probably there, there's some level of all of these, but this is really just for you to have a high level awareness so it's a, it's a nice to have. And I like to keep on enforcing this message that data governance is a business function. I know we're talking a lot about technical stuff right now, but don't forget that data governance is a business function. And even though we are talking about all this technical stuff, they, they just support the application and enforcement of data governance. Okay, lastly, any other artifacts that we might have. So, uh, you know, a report catalog. So a catalog of all the reports that the organization might have. A data model, uh, any scorecards and data quality standards. Again, most likely these won't exist, but it's good to confirm. You never know what's what's happening at a local, a local level. Sometimes you would be surprised. Some departments kind of take it upon themselves and they are already documenting some of these things. They are already putting some effort into it. So you can definitely try and capitalize on that for sure. Okay. Now, you also want to know how much information is documented, how much information lives in people's heads. And if things are documented, how are they managed? Who's maintaining these documents? Chances are that most of these if they exist, are being maintained by those champions that we've identified prior to this. But they're just not shared broadly. Lastly, here's, here's my uh, sort of conclusion for the ad hoc assessment. These things, we're not really doing them sequentially. We're not finding this out, you know, what are the pain points first and wh who are the people and what's the tech and information environment looking like. No, usually you kind of start to do all of these in parallel, a little bit of each. And as you've seen, they kind of feed each other out. All right. So this is one way. This is how we are concluding our ad hoc assessment, uh, which is something necessary that you need to do before you're implementing data governance. It's something crucial. I hope you found this to be helpful. Again, Another way of doing it is through data governance maturity models, but that's another topic for another lesson. Thank you so much. I, I, I hope that you find this to be helpful. And if you'd like to learn more, please check out lightsondata.com and uh, the courses that I have on data governance. Cheers.